Today's word is from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25. Fifth main point, build others up according to their needs, verses 25 through 32. Read verse 25. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we are all members of one body. It says, put off falsehood. A believer should not lie. People begin by lying once or twice, but their lies will eventually be revealed. If they are found lying, then their words will no longer be credible, even if they tell the truth. We believers must be right in conscience and be truthful. In John chapter 8 verse 44, it says that liars are children of the devil. We believers are all members of one body. Can a member deceive another member? The entire body hurts when we hurt a finger. Likewise, because the church is one body, a member should not deceive another member. We must help and be truthful to each other. Then we can help our brothers and sisters when they are in trouble. Then we can receive help from other members. Many works are handled properly and smoothly when people speak and act truthfully. A person approached Pastor Lee Ki Sun and asked, What is the most important thing in Christianity? Pastor Lee replied, Being truthful. Then the person asked again about the second most important thing. Pastor Lee replied again, Being truthful. Then the person asked a third time, and the pastor gave the same answer, being truthful. Even in this world, people entrust tasks to those who are truthful and sincere. In the same way, God entrusts important tasks and everything to those who are truthful and sincere. Verse 26, In your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. A believer should not be angry. It says in scripture that one cannot fulfill God's righteousness when he is angry. Yet, because we are humans, there are times when we may become angry. However, the important thing here is that we do not sin even if we become angry. Doing anything in anger always results in mistakes. There are times when we become violently angry because of Satan's temptations. 
we lose to the devil once we begin to express rage. Also, it says, do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. The amount of anger increases as it stays in our hearts. At first, we may be upset at something. Then, as we think over the upsetting situation, our anger will increase and we will commit a big mistake. That is why we must resolve our anger before the sun goes down. We can resolve anger by praying. We can also do so while we meditate about how Jesus had patience, forgave, and loved people like us. Then we can love one another and show compassion. Verse 27 And do not give the devil a foothold. When we are angry, the devil will take the chance to enrage us to the point where we sin. Satan tries to make us fall whenever he gets the chance to. When we are angry, Satan will take the chance to come and make us fall. Verse 28 He who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with his own hands that he may have something to share with those in need. This verse tells us not to steal. Also, it says that one should, with their own hands, share with those in need. We must not steal. Taking something by force Lying and not keeping promises for one's own advantage and stealing what belongs to God is sin. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 8, it says that not offering tithes is stealing what belongs to God. The Lord's day also belongs to God. Not giving God what we must give Him is also considered stealing. Anything we take that does not belong to us is stealing. We are all stewards of God. We must carry out our calling as stewards. However, if a steward considers the things that belong to his master as his own, he is an unjust steward. We must take care of what belongs to God and properly manage our callings as stewards. Then we should use things according to the will of God our Master. Verse 29 Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. In order for a believer to build others up, he must not talk unwholesomely. We must speak good words that benefit those who hear us. If a person speaks wicked and perverse words, he will become filthy. 
That person will not build up the church, and will cover the glory of God. Therefore, we believers must always speak good and holy words. We must speak words that build others up. Even if something is true, we must not speak. If our words will not benefit others, does this glorify God? Does this benefit those who listen? Is what I am saying good? We need to ask these questions when we speak. Verse thirty. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Lying, being angry, stealing, and speaking unwholesome words all harm the building of the church. Not only that, but these things. Lead to grieving the Holy Spirit, which is sin. We have been sealed in the Holy Spirit. We have been born again with God's Word and the Holy Spirit. Belief in God's Word is proof that we have received the seal of the Holy Spirit. We must not grieve the Holy Spirit. Verse thirty-one. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Evil resides in each of us. We must get rid of bitterness. Rage and anger, brawling and slander. We must get rid of the evil desire to harm other people. If we are going to be used for God's work, we must first get rid of such desires. Verse thirty-two. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. We believers must be compassionate to one another. We must always be kind and loving. We must also know how to show compassion to others. We must love not only those who are good to us, but also love those who wrong us. Just as God forgave us in Christ, we must forgive one another. We are actually sinners who are not worthy of forgiveness, yet. God forgave us of our sins through His love and through Jesus Christ. When we understand God's love and forgiveness, we can begin to forgive others just as Jesus forgave us. We will continue the lecture with Ephesians chapter five. The title of this chapter is love. First, act in love, verses one through seven. Second, act in light, verses eight through fourteen. Third, act wisely, verses fifteen through twenty-one. Fourth, teachings. To wives and husbands, verses twenty-two through thirty-three. This chapter teaches us to act in love and light, 
and to live wisely. First, act in love, verses one through seven. Read verse one. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children. Since we are dearly loved children, we must be imitators of God. We are loved by God. We are the objects of God's love. We have become children of God. Thus, we must be imitators of God. Parents raise their children with love. When children are raised in love, they begin to act like their parents. Because we are loved by God, we must follow His example. The verse teaches us. To act in love, verse two, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us, and gave Himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Verse one tells us to be imitators of God. And to imitate God is to imitate Christ. The greatest quality of Christ that we must resemble is love. We live in His love because we received His love. Love continues to overflow in us. Because we live in that love, believers should love one another in that world of love. It says that Christ gave Himself as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. We must give ourselves as rightful sacrifices to God. Just as Jesus did, we must give ourselves to God. We must sacrifice ourselves to God. Christianity is a religion that forgives others and makes sacrifices for the salvation of others. It says that Christ was offered to God as fragrant offering and sacrifice. In the Old Testament times, the offering of atonement was offered by sprinkling the blood of ox or sheep. This refers to how Jesus Christ. Bled for our sins on the cross. We believers must also always act in love. We must learn how to make sacrifices just like Jesus. We must be at the place where we can be faithful, just as Jesus was. Because Jesus Christ suffered and died on the cross, there is the glory of resurrection. There is life, and there is glory when we make sacrifices as Jesus did. We must become believers who build up righteousness. By sacrificially obeying God's word for God's movement of salvation, just as Jesus sacrificially loved us to death and obeyed God's word, we must become like Christ. Verse three, but among you. 
there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed because these are improper for God's holy people. This verse teaches us passive ways in becoming like God. We are told not to have even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or greed. We must stay far from sexual immorality and other impurities. We must also get rid of greed for personal gain. Verse 4 Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. These refer to filthy acts. Secular words words that go against the Bible, and taunting must not be present in believers. We must always speak words of thanksgiving for God's grace. Verse 5, For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person such a man is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. In Colossians chapter 3 verse 5, it says that greed is idolatry. One cannot see God because of greed. One cannot properly worship God when he is blinded by greed for money and materials. One cannot know God. Life is not in materials but in God's word. We can properly serve God when we get rid of greed. Also, it says that these people cannot receive the inheritance of God. This means that the unchosen will go to hell. Then what does this mean to believers? When a believer is sexually immoral and greedy, it interferes with him receiving inheritance in heaven. Rather, he will be disciplined and reprimanded because of such things. Verse 6 Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. This refers to the deception that believers can commit any sins as long as they believe in God. They say that one can commit sexual immorality, be impure and greedy, and speak foolish words even if they believe in Jesus. This is a lie. Believers do not go to hell when they commit sins. However, believers receive God's discipline when they sin. Believers are disciplined by God when they sin in this world. However, since the souls of believers have been reborn, they receive salvation. Believers receive salvation 
but they receive God's discipline when they sin. Believers will grow distant from God when they sin. Prayers will grow dry. There will be no peace in believers' hearts. Some will fail in their business as a result of discipline. One's children may receive God's discipline. One's body may be disciplined. There is God's discipline when believers sin. Yet because believers have been born again, they will receive salvation. Verse 7 Therefore do not be partners with them. We must not be partners with those who are obscene, impure, speak foolish talk, and taunt others. We believers must always act in love. The second main point is act in light. Verses 8 through 14. Verse 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. We were once in spiritual darkness, which is death. Now we have come to have light in the Lord through faith in Jesus Christ. That is why we must live as children of light. We must shine this light to others through our actions. All glory should return to God. Thus, verse 9 speaks about the fruit of light. The fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Believers who live in light should bear the fruit of light. Three things were mentioned, goodness, righteousness, and truth. We must do good things. We must build up righteousness and bear the fruit of truth. Verse 10, And find out what pleases the Lord. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16, it says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. It tells us, not to put God to the test. What does this mean? To put God to the test in Deuteronomy chapter 6 asks these questions. Is God present among us? Is he not? Will God do this? Will he not do this? It means to doubt God. Doubt is unbelief. Doubt is sin. However, verse 10 finds out what pleases God. What must we do to please God? We must figure out God's pleasing will. There are five ways in which we can find out God's pleasing will. First, we must find it in the Bible. We can find God's pleasing will when we read the Bible. Second, we can find it when we use our conscience of faith. We cannot follow things that guilt our conscience. Third, we can find it 
through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth, He leads us to the truth. However, if anything does not agree with the Bible, the inspiration, no matter how great it is, is not from the Holy Spirit. We can find God's pleasing will through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Fourth, we can find it in God's providence. When we see that the things we do for God go smoothly because of God's guidance, then we can know that it is His pleasing will. Lastly, we can know through our religious experiences. Therefore, we must live lives of faith that pleases God. Verse 11. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Here it tells us to get rid of fruitless deeds of darkness, and live a life of faith that bears fruit. We must live life that bears fruit of light and fruit of the Holy Spirit. Deeds of darkness refer to debauchery, drunkenness, sexual immorality, and we must get rid of these sins. We must rebuke them, not participate in them. One time, a pastor wanted to drink alcohol, so he went into a pub in a dark alleyway. When he entered, he saw an elder of the church drinking. Welcome, pastor, have a glass. Then they drank together. They wandered about and sinned in darkness. We must not participate in deeds of darkness. God is pleased when we rebuke them instead. Verse 12, For it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. Unbelievers sin in hidden and unknown places, but the deeds they do are in fact very shameful. When we commit sins, we do it secretly, but these are very shameful before God. When a son studies with the door closed, he thinks, I wish my mom would open the door and see me studying. Yet when he locks the door and does something that he should not be doing, he may think, I hope my mom will not enter. When we properly do work of faith before God, we are not ashamed. The deeds of darkness are very shameful to both God and to humans. Verse 13, But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. If a man sins and his sins are exposed, he will repent of his sins and be led into light through the exposure of his sins. Through the exposure of sins, 
we can get rid of works of darkness and enter into the light. We can enter into grace more deeply through the exposure and repentance of sins. Just as more gratitude is expressed by those who are much forgiven, we must give thanks for the exposure of sins and stand upright before God with proper hearts. However, those whose sins are not exposed continue to live in sin and will eventually be judged. Thus, we must thank those who reproach us for our sins. God exposes our sins through people. God exposed the prophet Balaam's sins through a donkey. At times, God personally rebukes sins. God rebukes through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, through discipline, through guilt of conscience, or even through little children. Then when we accept it with good hearts, then it will appear as light. We must be those who accept reproaches with good hearts. Verse 14 This is why it is said, Wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. We believers are those who sleep during the day. Unbelievers are those who sleep at night. This is because the believers are in light and belong to the day. Even if we sleep, because we belong to day, we sleep during the day. This means that the spirit is asleep. The spirit is not dead but asleep. One's senses are shut off while one sleeps. That is why the verse tells the spirit to rise. It says to turn from flesh and world-centered life and go back into the spiritual world. When we believers are awake and the light shines brightly upon us, then we can walk with God in the spiritual world. We can defeat the devil when we live in the light. When believers are asleep, they cannot defeat the devil and cannot believe properly. The verse is calling the sleeping spirit to rise. Then Christ will shine on them. We must live in the world of light in the spiritual world. If our faith is to wake up, we must repent of our sins. Then we must search for God with all our hearts. Then we must be with Jesus Christ. We must obey His will. Let us move on to the third point Act wisely. Verses 15 through 21. Verse 15. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. 
It says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, that we are to be as shrewd as a serpent. What does this mean? Adam and Eve ate the fruit of knowledge of good and evil and sinned. They were tempted by the serpent. However, the serpent did not tempt them with his own wisdom, but with wisdom that came from somewhere else. The serpent tempted them with wisdom it received from Satan. Thus, be shrewd like a serpent means that we should not be wise with our own wisdom. Instead, we should be wise with God's wisdom. The verse refers to the spiritual wisdom that is acquired through God's Word and the works of the Holy Spirit. Satan is wiser than humans. We believers cannot outsmart Satan with our own wisdom. We can outsmart Satan with the spiritual wisdom we receive from God's wisdom, the Bible, and workings of the Holy Spirit. Verse 16, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. We believers must make the most of every opportunity. This is why we need to believe properly. Everything is getting more evil during the last days. It becomes easier to sin. We should make most of every opportunity and have strong faith. The world begins to gravitate towards secularism, hedonism, and realism during the last days. If we do not make most of the opportunities we are given, we cannot properly believe in God. Verse 17 Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. If a servant worked hard on something, but it is not his master's will, then he had just wasted his time. His works are meaningless because his works did not correspond with his master's will. If workers built a house that was not constructed according to the blueprint, then all their works would have been in vain. That is why it is of utmost importance to understand the truth. Everything done without proper understanding of the truth will turn out to be meaningless. We must understand the truth and build a firm spiritual temple on the truth. All works in our lives will have been done in vain in the end if they do not align with the Bible. This is the reason why we need to understand the Lord's will. He who understands it is wise. We must properly know God's will. 
We must be wise believers. Verse eighteen. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Believers must not drink alcohol. Many verses can be found regarding that topic. There are people who claim that all is fine. As long as they do not get drunk, because the verse only said, "Do not get drunk." For example, there are people who get drunk after drinking half a bottle of alcohol. At first, they drink a little, then drink some more later on. They will get drunk as much as they drink. This also teaches that we believers must not get drunk with the world. In Revelation chapter seventeen, verses two through five, it says that dwellers on earth have become drunk. On the wine of the mother of the prostitutes. This refers to being drunk with the world. Also, drunkenness leads to debauchery. We must not live in debauchery, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit refers to being led and ruled by the Holy Spirit. This means to be led with God's word. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is the same as being filled with the truth and with love. Verse nineteen. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Spiritual songs refer to the songs the born again spirits sing because of their renewed spirits. Their praises are sent up to God when we praise Him with spiritual songs. Verses twenty through twenty-one. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. We believers must always thank God the Father. There is always joy and thanksgiving in God. We must give thanks to Jesus for saving us. We must believe that everything will work for the good, and we must be thankful. The verse also says. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. We must always be servants to one another, and learn to serve one another. Jesus also said he came down to this earth to serve. We believers. Must always be ready to serve others. With this, we will conclude the sixth lecture on the prison epistles. Thank you very much.